For breaststroke, my favorite drill is a combination of kicking and pulling. We do what we call kick, kick, pull, which would be two kicks and one pull. And the key element here is that everything happens on the surface. The swimmer's in a streamlined, fundamental position of breaststroke. They take a kick to get the feel of moving straight forward off the kick. And then out of the second kick, they would take a full breaststroke pull and then return back to that streamlined position on the surface. The key to this drill is after the pull, you don't dive underwater and then come back up. And once they've done that, we would normally pair that up with pull, pull, kick, which they would take two pulls and in between, they really wouldn't do anything with their legs. They would just let them kind of be in a natural position. And after the second pull, they would kick and feel the acceleration into the streamline as they add the kick to the pull. So it's a very good timing drill and it just kind of works on each of the parts. I'm a big believer in working on the parts of things if you can break it into components and particularly in breaststroke. For the butterfly, I really like a drill that we do called two, two, and two, which is simply two right arm strokes, two left arm strokes, and two full strokes and we tend to have them breathe on the full strokes only so that it doesn't upset their rhythm when they're breathing on the single strokes. Or you can do it where you breathe on the second of every one of those strokes, but they have to then turn their head to the side. I never like for swimmers to breathe to the front in a butterfly single arm drill because they raise their head up, their hips drop, and it's really a very unnatural position. But two, two, and two butterfly is definitely a thing you could do for a longer period of time than regular butterfly stroke, and it helps you figure out the rhythm of your normal stroke. For freestyle swimming, one of the drills that I really like to do is a drill called the triple touch switch, 3TS for short. And that starts with the swimmer, arm extended, ear on their arm, they'll recover, and they'll touch halfway between elbow and wrist. They'll go back and touch right at their hip. And then they'll come right back and slide their hand in. And then they switch to the other side in the same position. So they'll just repeat this drill in a pattern. And what it does is it really teaches them to stabilize their body. We tend to use fins quite a bit, and it's a mix of things that we do. Almost always there's a technical component. It's a very versatile piece of equipment. We may be using fins while they're just normally swimming, so they can be more closer to a race speed, also a race tempo. We would use them for kicking alone, and we would also use it for just regular kicking sets on the board. I also like to use paddles and fins. It's a good combination so they get a little bit more speed but the resistance of the paddles and they can learn some things about their strokes. The Alpha Pro Fin is really unique mainly because of the shape. You notice that the fin-like structure of it really mimics the foot better than a traditional fin which might be triangular or much larger. It's also shaped in a way so that the swimmer kicks in a natural position. If you look at good flutter kickers, their feet move like this. The way that this is designed tends to shape the kick in a proper way. The Alpha Pro Fin is the most comfortable fin on the market without losing resistance and the power work that you can do with it. We use hand paddles traditionally to build strength and use it to add resistance to a stroke. The swimmer learns a lot about where their hands are positioned, when to apply pressure, when not to apply pressure you're gonna get a resistance that allows them to get in proper position, but not something that changes the way they're gonna swim. The way it's designed, it forces the swimmers to push down on their fingertips and get in a proper pulling position in the front part of the strip. One way that we've used this is using what we call reverse paddle. And we'll have the swimmers actually swim like this. And what it tends to do is really emphasize the forearm and particularly for sprint swimmers, it opens up the recovery and then have a quicker catch, which is what we're trying to get with our sprinters. The MP Strength Paddle are unique in that they really have been designed to mimic the shape of the human hand. You can see the bones, so to speak, of the paddle. And also there's a raised portion here, which gives you a much more natural pulling pattern. One of the great ways to learn a technique 
is to add resistance to a motion. And these paddles are ideal for that. We use snorkels for a variety of things. I've recently gotten into using snorkels quite a bit when they're kicking because that allows their head, neck, and spine to be in a more natural swimming position. We'll use it with arms by their sides. They could do rotational kicking. We also use it during pulling because it keeps their head in line and they can really focus on technique. And I do think there's a conditioning value with the snorkels as well. The Focus Snorkel is one of my favorite new products from the MP line. There's several reasons for this. Number one, you see there's a natural streamlined design of it which allows the swimmer to cut through the water in a much more natural form. The thing that I think is probably best about it is the stability. You can see this triangular piece here. This really makes sure that the snorkel is completely stable and there's no side-to-side -side movement when the athlete is swimming. As a coach, I like to see straps like this that are unbreakable and easy to adjust. And also the mouthpiece, which is designed to be comfortable so the swimmer doesn't have to bite down very hard on it. All of the swimmers that we have using it feel like it's definitely an upgrade from anything they've used before.